All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this 90 days DevOps challenge, the mission number 10 today. Today is our last mission, and we started building an end to end uh, DevOps project with, uh, you know, uh, within 90 days. And we have completed nine missions so far, starting with Docker, Git, uh, Jenkins, Cloud, Terraform, Kubernetes, Argo. And finally, we're going to set up uh, or learn about how to use monitoring how to set up monitoring with Prometheus and Grafana and how to use that monitoring data to do something. And that would be deploying some Canary releases. And that is what we are going to get started with today. Before we do so, let me welcome everyone that I see here. I see Deepak, Cedric, uh, Pradeep, SY, Ranganathan, um, Ola, Ben, Charita, Dinesh, Naga, Rajdeep, Anand, Abhijit, Sainath, Janmajay, Sainath, again, uh, Sainath Reddy, Hemant. Uh, so feel free to say hi and welcome to this 90 day DevOps challenge and the live masterclass where uh, today I'm going to show you how to set up monitoring on uh, Kubernetes using Prometheus and Grafana, which are the two most popular technologies out there when it comes to monitoring of Kubernetes. Let me connect my whiteboard and we should be on our way to get started explaining the topics. And uh, if you have questions, feel free to post them using the chat window and the Q&A session section out there. Uh, just familiarize yourself with this interface and, um, you know, start posting questions, uh, you know, start saying hi, uh, drop in to say hi as well. And uh, here goes my whiteboard that I'm going to connect. All right, so I have a Kubernetes environment here. I want to set up monitoring for it. I've installed Kubernetes. I have deployed in my applications. Uh, I have set up Argo CD on top of this. So this is the environment that I have, which where I'm going to set up monitoring. In fact, I have an Nginx ingress controller as well. So I have Argo components there, Argo CD, Argo rollouts. There is Nginx ingress controller. I have a couple of environments, prod and staging where I'm deploying my applications. You can see my application deployments here. This is done with Argo CD. We've talked about Argo CD last week where I did the same, deployed to prod and staging and created the automated deployment for both. And this deployment right now, the rollout is actually using Argo rollouts. So in fact, to staging, I am deploying with blue green. This is the UI that Argo rollouts come with. And in production, I am deploying using Canary release. I'm going to show you how to integrate monitoring with this Canary. That's why I have set up all of this. And now I will go ahead and set up the monitoring part. When it comes to monitoring, really, right? Uh, in general, with monitoring, there are three different types of uh, what we call as observability today. Comes with three different flavors or three different things that you typically want to monitor and observe. First is the metrics monitoring. That's where our Prometheus plus Grafana shines. That's what we typically use in Kubernetes world for metrics monitoring. When we say metrics, we are talking about a chart over a period of time. So at this time, you had uh, this much of CPU load and after five minutes, it went up to this much percent. And then after 10 minutes, it came down. So you chart it based on the time series data. And that is typically the metrics monitoring, CPUs, memory, network, IO performance, and various other things that we typically monitor using metrics. The second thing that we want to monitor is logs. To do so, you can also set up centralized monitoring systems such as ELK stack, which includes Elasticsearch Logstash Kibana, or it could be something like Slack, uh, not Slack, forgot the uh, the enterprise tool is Splunk, right? So either we have Splunk, which is very, very popular, uh, something like Splunk or ELK stack, or it could be EFK where Logstash can be replaced with Fluentd and so on. And then we have uh, uh, metrics, we have logs, and we have traces. 
traces our distributed tracing system like a tool like Jagger or you have uh, um, open tracing system basically when you have microservices like what's happening with service A to B, B to C, C to D all those connections is what we are you know monitoring with tracing so there are three different types of monitoring and observability systems that we typically set up out of that we are talking about just one right now that is metrics monitoring with Prometheus and Grafana right so how do we go about setting up Prometheus and Grafana and is there anything else apart from that is what we will look at so when it comes to setting up metrics monitoring we typically use a bunch of tools here not just Prometheus Prometheus is one of the component which is a time series database Prometheus is just a time series database earlier we used to use tools like Nagios and whatnot right and we use Prometheus which is a time series database to display to visualize this data we have Grafana to send out alerts and integrate with different systems alerting system we have alert manager to collect the metrics we use uh, various things like node exporter which runs on every single node collects the metrics on the node like CPU memory and all those basic metrics we have tools like Coopstate metrics which integrates with Kubernetes and Kubernetes API server collects a lot of metrics and then sends it to Prometheus so when we talk about deploying a monitoring system such as uh, Prometheus uh, we are actually talking about a bunch of microservices like at least five services like node exporter coop state metrics Prometheus itself Grafana and alert manager there's a question from Rajdeep about uh, this so will Zabbix be better choice over Grafana plus Prometheus it used to be if you had asked me this question 12 years ago um, I would have said yes Zabbix is the great tool instead of something like Nagios um, and it used to be quite popular at that point of time but today uh, with the ecosystem that is evolving Prometheus is a much better option also Prometheus does uh, scraping automatically so you just annotate your let's say in Kubernetes um, I'm gonna start monitoring my Nginx I'm gonna show you how that works like I just set up some annotation on Nginx and say that oh this is where my metrics are available go and collect it Prometheus will automatically go and collect the metrics start collecting the metrics uh, from Nginx automatically uh, Coopset metrics and uh, tools like that node exporter uh, provide a lot of plugin and ecosystem where you can integrate with anything monitor anything like you want to monitor your database like MySQL you can have an adapter set up with MySQL which collects every single kind of information that is required and then sends it to uh, Prometheus and so on so this ecosystem is evolving very well and in the world of Kubernetes more relevant tools are not Nagios and Zabbix which were there earlier but more we are leaning towards Prometheus and Grafana kind of systems and th that, those are the tools which are kind of the de facto standard on uh, in the world of Kubernetes today um, all right so how do we set this up is where I'm going to bring in a tool called as HEM because if we have five different microservices to deploy in Kubernetes this will translate into 20 different objects because for Prometheus I may have a deployment, a service, a volume maybe, a config map, maybe an ingress rule uh, for Grafana I may have a similar thing and if I just consider four resources per service um, I'm talking about five into four is 20 resources and uh, if I have 20 different manifests to apply the YAML files instead of that I would rather prefer applying one package and that's where I bring in hem and say hem install and Prometheus stack or Prometheus stack and this goes and it deploys all these 20 different resources and that's where hem offers me that additional value hem is a fantastic tool when it comes to deploying the applications anything third-party application on uh, top of Kubernetes and hem is another way of packaging not just way of deploying but it's also a way of packaging your services into a chart that is what a package is uh, in the world of hem and deploy it to the different environments and so on and that's hem for you now hem 
uh, is what I have already installed in my environment. Let me confirm that. It's already there. So I don't have to install him, but using him, I would start installing Prometheus. Typically, the packages that you install on Kubernetes are available on artifacthub.io. You see, it says find and install and publish cloud native packages on top of Kubernetes. Basically, cloud native is rough, loosely referenced to Kubernetes today. Um, and that's what you see here. So like, let's say Prometheus. You have Prometheus operator, Prometheus chart, Prometheus, you know, this and Prometheus that different types of packages available, including Prometheus tag. This is what we're going to deploy because this not only deploys Prometheus, but also uh, a bunch of charts, uh, dashboards, and everything that is required, it comes with the entire package. So even before this, the basic monitoring in Kubernetes, we need to still set up with, there is a command, there are a couple of commands here, kubectl top command, and then top pods, and top nodes. If you look at this, uh, Kubernetes by default does not have the monitoring enabled. Even default monitoring like CPU and memory for your pods and for nodes, you need some sort of a monitoring system. And for that, I'm deploying this metric server. In the world of Kubernetes, typically you just apply a manifest and it you know runs everything or creates all the resources which are required. Yeah, let me get out of this uh, frame and let's focus on just the technology side. And uh, that's what we do here. We have the manifest, right? Uh, I'm going to allow Jan Majer to speak. If you have a question, you can ask uh, through voice also. OK, so this has deployed my metric server, which means in a few seconds or already, I can run top nodes and top parts. Right, and uh, there are no uh, pods in this namespace. That's why it didn't show me anything. But you see now the monitoring data for nodes and pods is already available here. Right. So this is my basic monitoring with metric server. But I want to deploy Prometheus and Grafana, right, to get the real charts and dashboards and stuff. And that's when I'm bringing in this particular chart, Coop Prometheus stack, Coop Prometheus stack and running it with him. And then I want to customize a few things, like I want to run a particular service, Grafana with node port 30,400, and uh, make sure that it is picking up the values that I want it to monitor. So I'm using him to install this now. Before this, I'll have to add the uh, chart repository, I think. Coop Prometheus stack this way. Yeah, and then I use this command hem upgrade. What this does is sets up Grafana, Prometheus, everything for me, which I can check in the monitoring namespace. Yeah, I'll have to create a namespace. I can also use hem command to create the namespace automatically. There is an option to do that. But I'm watching the monitoring namespace and you're going to see everything here, basically. Yeah, you see now it has created this um, some admission controller. It will start with an operator and then it launches everything. It deploys everything for me. Right, so you have <clears throat> Prometheus coming up. 
along with uh, everything that is required. There's a node exporter, three instances of node exporter on every single node. I have three node cluster. So three node exporters, group state metrics, Prometheus, Grafana, Alert Manager, uh, all of that it is bringing up and then it will ex expose this Grafana on port number 30,400, which I should be able to access. from And this is how this is why you want to use Prometheus because with Prometheus and Grafana and Hem, uh, you can actually set up the monitoring very rapidly, and you do see uh, very detailed monitoring is already available, and uh, it will start generating the graphs, etc. Right. So this is just one chart. There are many different uh, dashboards which are already available here. Some of this will start getting data. Some of these may need some further configuration, but there are many which uh, start showing the data in, in a minute's time because we just started monitoring and you see the data just coming in now. And uh, if you come back after a few minutes, you're gonna see a pretty sophisticated monitoring uh, system with a lot of data which is already there, right? And uh, you can get the details of the nodes for example, the memory utilization, CPU utilization, some of these graphs need a further configuration also. Uh, and again, you see, I'm just gonna focus on the last five minutes worth data, right? So you only see the network and uh, you know the storage, disk space, memory utilization is quite high because there's a lot of things running already uh, and so on, right? And there are many such dashboards out there. So what's happening with scheduler? Uh, nothing that we see right now. What's happening with workloads? We do see some data here, the memory and CPU and so on. And then you can filter by uh, specific workloads as well. We uh, don't see, probably not nothing with multiple cluster. Okay, we do see the cluster information. Yeah. And this is already integrated with everything that is required like it has a connection with uh, Prometheus already. It has a connection with Alert Manager. So this HEM has already set up everything, including the dashboards. And then on top of this, I can add more dashboards as well from Grafana. So Grafana has a library of dashboards that you can add. And here you can, uh, let's see monitoring your Kubernetes deployment. There are some dashboards out there. Uh, cost management, this would work on cloud. Some container insights and stuff, right? Uh, all right, so the dashboards can be found out from here also. So data sources is Prometheus. All panels is fine. Collector type is uh, a node exporter, let's say. And let's say we want to get node exporter specific information. And this is a dashboard which has an ID, one at six zero. So I can import this dashboard into my system. So I can go to dashboard from new import one, just provide the ID. And then typically have to provide the data source. Yeah, you can add various such dashboards also. And uh, this will start showing me the data. 
I'm just looking at the last five minute worth data and you have it here a lot of information from node export because we have node exporters fully configured actually so shows me a lot more data that i had right and this is like a working monitoring system uh, ready to go out of the box really and you can see the cpu uh, this is a good dashboard so cpu uh, system load memory that we've already seen cpu utilization is not much but the memory is being used a lot quite a lot um, and that kind of monitoring that you can see here right and this date monitoring data is coming out of prometheus and then grafana is a visualizer which sits, shows sits on top of this basically now how do i set this up uh, if you're talk, talking about this um, this is my kubernetes tutorial if you are interested in there are a lot of tutorials out there uh, which you can try out and further you can uh, be a member of uh, school of devops community so you can go to school of devops membership and if you are interested you can join the uh, nerd membership we have some offers right now this is going to change we're going to most likely discontinue the yearly membership so if you want to take that uh, good time is now and i'm going to share a special offer with you which is available only for the next 15 minutes if you want to start with that membership which gives you access to courses coaching um, our challenges and uh, let's say our weekly calls as well right now coming back to our setup here i have a ingress controller through which i'm accessing this application now that ingress controllers were uh, monitoring i want prometheus and grafana to collect the monitoring for it i have already set up prometheus and grafana i will also redeploy my ingress controller so that it also starts exporting the metrics so this is what um, prometheus does well so with ingress controller or any of the components if i add some annotations and define that oh you collect the metrics from here uh, it would start automatically collecting the metrics and let me show you the uh, let's say prometheus ui as well and uh, i'm going to connect to that prometheus ui give me one moment using port forward okay so what i've just done is uh, started forwarding 9090 port on my system where everything is running and this is where my prometheus is available this is the prometheus graph so grafana does a much better job visualizing it you can see that but you can run the same queries like oh i want to find out the cpu information where is it coming from you can look at uh, inspect the queries right which you see here right the query inspector and it is basically the query is uh, something that you can directly run on let's say uh, prometheus as well like this is the expression that you have uh, let me try this running on prometheus this may or may not but uh, uh, you do would see if you dive into this one this is getting refreshed actually 
but you can find out a particular query and the same query can be run uh, from Prometheus as well, right? And we're looking at some node file system available bytes uh, for the, from the node exporter and that would show me the data here as well. Also right now, I don't see anything related to NGINX. That's what I wanted to really show you. So when you see these graphs, there is nothing for NGINX yet, right? That is because it's not monitoring for my NGINX ingress controller. I would have it do that. So I'm redeploying my NGINX ingress controller so that Prometheus picks up the NGINX configurations automatically. I'm going to ensure that happens. So I'm just redeploying my NGINX ingress controller. You see, this is my NGINX ingress controller, which is just getting redeployed. Now, when this gets redeployed, what happens is Prometheus will start picking up the uh, configuration, like monitoring data from it, right? Uh, there is a question from Bekalu Abe, uh, uh, Bekalu. So how do we access NerdPass who resides in US the same way? So you can, uh, all right. You can use a code that I will share with you from here. You will see the USD price and uh, that's this page. And you can use a code 90DDC15 to get 15% off on that. So it's the same amount of uh, discount that you have there as well. And uh, where uh, do we see the Nginx yet? No, not yet. But you'll start seeing it very uh, f soon, basically. Once this gets redeployed, still in pending state, I believe this could be because of the load on the system. What I'll do is I'll just delete my previous Nginx controller. All right, at least one is running. This one is not needed. Yeah, I think that's cleaned up anyways. So what I should see now is once Prometheus starts picking up Nginx, you will see a lot of Nginx related in monitoring data. And then you can start querying that as well. And then on top of that, I will add a dashboard. You see, it has picked up Nginx data. So how do you make it monitor is basically, if you look at this Nginx controller, I will show you. And this is why Prometheus is very useful because with Prometheus, it's very easy to start monitoring. Uh, you just annotate your pod. Let's say this is my pod in the namespace called as ingress nginx and there's something called as annotations so this adds some annotations where it asks prometheus to start monitoring right so this is managed by it these are the labels uh, i should have annotations also somewhere uh, these are just the labels added to it and then there are properties or annotations added on the pod as well. And using those annotations, I probably don't see it right now here, but using those annotations, it's uh, Prometheus has started monitoring and collecting this data. And now that Prometheus has this data, I can show it on uh, Grafana by adding a particular dashboard. So there could be uh, I'm adding a dashboard and this time I'm adding a custom dashboard for uh, Prometheus and Grafana, sorry, Nginx here for monitoring that. So I'll go to the dashboard, import, and then 
paste this JSON data. Go into the dashboard, import, and uh, paste the JSON data, load it, select the data source Prometheus. It has picked up all the configuration from that JSON and it has imported it now. Yeah, what you see now is uh, uh, already some data, some data here. Yeah, so uh, request volume, you probably don't see it yet. Latency, you should see this actually. So let's wait for this to update itself. We're expecting to see everything, including latency and so on. I was actually start uh, loading this on auto refresh so that we're generating, let's say every two seconds, there is a request. So we should rec uh, generate 30 requests per second or so uh, to the ingress controller, which means we should start seeing data here actually. Now you do, some data is coming in. So controller connection, uh, some request volume. So let's wait for this to kind of uh, start seeing some data here, right? Now this is how easy it is to start monitoring. Yeah. Uh, and I just added a custom monitoring, you know, uh, for let's say Nginx ingress controller right now, right? Um, I probably need to redo this part or something because the annotations don't show up, right? Uh, some data is coming in, some data is not. I'm gonna wait for this to uh, show up. If not, I may have to uh, redo Nginx itself because it may not have picked up the right configuration, all of that. So uh, let me just run this. This is item potent. So if, even if I run it and if the prop properties are there, uh, it would automatically work. You see, there's some, you know, uh, we are adding a few things here. So setting up some properties, either it gets added as a label somewhere or an annotation somewhere. And based on that, Prometheus is going to sort of redeploy. So this is already running. It doesn't see it necessary. So we are just waiting for this data to show up. Now it is showing up actually. Uh, because of the request coming in, the data is uh, started coming in also, right? You do see the latency. Uh, you do see the request volumes as well, right? How many requests are coming in, etc. Do see some data there, right? So it will start showing up more data as well if I run the load test and stuff like that. Now, what I want to do is uh, start using this monitoring data to do something productive. And that is where I'm going to show you something very interesting, which is a Canary release that I already have here, but integrated with Nginx. So this is a Canary release where uh, I'm progressively sending more traffic or routing more tra traffic to the Canary. So when the Canary starts like V2 to V3, I want to update to v V3, it will create a Canary release for V3 and then gradually start shifting traffic to that V3, uh, you know, 20%, 40%, 60%, 80%, and so on, right? So essentially, Canary releases look like this. Canaries are, you are testing in production and progressively uh, releasing your product or the new version, uh, progressively and gradually you are releasing that. How it looks like is, this. So with Canary release, what happens is your traffic is going to the active service for your customers, right? And then you create a uh, Canary service. And to that, you start to gradually shifting some traffic, initially 20%, and then, you know, 40%, 60%, 80%, whatever. And what you can also do in between is to this Canary, you can also run against this new service, you can run some load test. The load test will run against only the canary service and then 
from there on you start monitoring for the metrics that you see from Prometheus. This is what Argo CD can do. Argo CD with Argo rollouts can automate the canary, the analysis and uh, all of that load test also. And that is what I'm going to configure now. Right now, what you see is a simple canary release. But now that I have monitoring data, I'm just shifting weightage like 20%, then wait for 20 seconds, then 40% and wait for 10 seconds and so on. In between, I will also run some load test. I'll add that configuration. I'll demonstrate that configuration to you. This is all part of uh, the Argo CD course that I'm coming up with. This is the monitoring data that we have already started getting, right? If I run load test against it, I will see a load uh, chart like this, actually, if I run a load test against this particular service. It will happen anyways. So as part of our monit uh, automated canary, it would happen. So what I'm going to do is my rollout for canary would have an uh, would run an experiment and would run the analysis as well at the same time. The experiment is more like a load test along with that. Uh, no, this is a functional test, fitness test. That is, it will run some basic fitness test on my application, make sure that it is OK after uh, creating the canary. And then after 60 percent traffic has been shifted to canary, it is going to run the load test and check for the latency. The load test is this. The load test will automatically run a load test against the canary, right? The vote.example.com against the canary release and so on. And I'll have to provide the configuration here. And then uh, I am also monitoring from Prometheus, right? I'm monitoring the latency. So latency should not cross like 50 percentile or I think around that is what I'm trying to monitor. So it should not cross 50 percentile. Uh, that is 50 milliseconds actually. That is uh, this data. The latency should not cross 50. If it crosses 50, I would consider this as a failure. There is a problem and then it will roll back automatically if it crosses 50 milliseconds. That is the kind of configuration that I want to do here. Right now you don't see 50, it is crossing 50 milliseconds at all uh, because right now there is not much of a load anyways. Even if there is load, which you will see here, the load will show up here in terms of uh, the number of requests. The number of requests currently is close to 0.5 per second, right? 30 requests per minute because we are refreshing at the interval of two seconds. I'm just sending one request per two seconds. So 30 requests per 60 seconds, so 0.5 requests per second. That's what you see right now. This will change. Uh, latency will also change. It will go up definitely. How much, uh, whether it stays manageable, let's find out and we'll do an automated canary release. I'm going to set up everything before uh, first and then I will launch the load test and everything for you. So let me go ahead and add this configuration. So how do we achieve this step by step is what I teach uh, would be teaching in my Argo CD course, which would be released by next month or so. And it would also be available as part of our membership platform. So uh, what am I doing here is uh, adding the code, the deployment code. Right now I am going via Argo CD. All of this is automated right now, which I would stop. Okay, I'm just saying don't do auto sync. I want to sync it uh, or I want to deploy it myself. And then I will start adding the code. So my rollout configuration, right? 
I have a traffic routing configuration, rollout configuration, etc. So this is my rollout configuration. I will also add a load test analysis. my load test analysis runs against a particular IP. So that goes here. I have a analysis template, which is gonna look at my Prometheus graph. Uh, this is the query it will run against Prometheus. this shows me the latency actually right now the latency is 9.25 milliseconds which is well above 50 this 9.25 millisecond approximately that much is what you're seeing here uh, close to less than 10 right 9.25 that is this latency graph it's actually coming out of prometheus like this and then grafana shows you a much better visualizer visualization that you already see here so i'm just adding everything that is needed for running this. I use a tool called as customize. So that applies everything for me. Uh, if you don't understand this, that's fine. This is just for uh, kind of, I just want everything to be applied directly. So just letting it, uh, you know, uh, apply. So I'm just trying to figure out what's the issue here. All right, so I have load test analysis. I okay, this is the load test, perfect. Uh, fitness test. Fine. Okay, I'm just preparing everything so that uh, my uh, monitoring data, load test, everything is well integrated and it's updated, you can see that. So it's gonna run a fitness test here uh, with an experiment and then it will do some analysis, automated analysis where it is running a load test 
and it is going to check for the latency this is the latency it will check for the latency uh, this is the latency it will check for and it's going to do that automatically this analysis everything will happen automatically uh, you will see that now and this is how we can actually uh, monitor uh, and use that monitoring data not just monitor but use that monitoring data for something like this to achieve uh, automated analysis canary analysis using ergo so this is quite an advanced concept but it's quite useful to understand these things on top of kubernetes so how do i trigger a new rollout is i'm gonna go from let's say v3 to uh, v4 right it's already i think running an experiment uh, let's check seems like it is in progress And this may run uh, for a few minutes, actually, the experiments and stuff. Right? And it's going to go ahead, uh, run the analysis here, load test analysis. If it is a new version, it keeps on doing that. Right? I'm going to remove one of this and just keep uh, the one for... runs it for three minutes or so some experiment here yeah you can see that runs it for three minutes i'm just gonna wait for it. it's a fitness test it runs it for three minutes or so and then it will uh, go and you know kind of uh, run rest of my things yeah i think uh, says progressing and it has created two as canary releases it is running an experiment that is the current status is that and then it is going to go ahead and run the analysis and uh, analysis runs and stuff like that as well right so experiment has been successful this part it keeps on adding the weightage automatically to this v3 right uh, and then after 60 percent of the weightage is shifted you can possibly watch that here. Uh, the weightage to the canary is about 60 right now right so this is my ingress rule so 60 percent of the traffic is going to v3 it has started an analysis run this analysis run runs the load test this load test will run for about uh, five minutes or so if i'm correct and then it will also keep on checking for the latency like five times it will do the check and any two times it fails um, you know it will basically uh, think that this release is not fit enough and this version is not fit enough to proceed and then it will roll back also it can, it can keep on doing that now that the load test is running you are going to see the load go on, gone up so request volume gone up from 0.5 request per second to about 60 requests per second more than that actually so you see this is automatically happening i'm launching uh, i just changed the version and it is started this release it is progressing slowly and steadily and after that after some time it has la launched a load test against my application which you already see here because of the load test the traffic has gone up the, the latency would have gone up as well has it gone up above 50 yes it is above 50 uh, for two minutes three minutes whatever if there is uh, an issue and if it cannot proceed 
it will keep on kind of uh, you know majoring that and it will keep on looking at the failures and uh, based on that it would automatically take uh, an action right whether it needs to fail whether it has to uh, proceed all of that it will keep on analyzing yeah the latency is i think it's 43.65 in that range that it detected once yeah so still waiting for that data to come in for the latency and it's running the analysis so it's already happening in an automated way so i can ensure that my uh, all the system works together and i can ensure that my uh, releases are fine when i launch a new version and it is within the normal range like my uh, latencies are fine and that means that my application is doing okay uh, if it starts suddenly showing up um, you know like spiking up suddenly for no reason um, it might be because of a bug right so that is basically uh, about um, how you can start automating your workflows completely with monitoring with uh, prometheus with grafana with argo cd that we have here um, and let's just watch the Argo rollouts progressing. Yeah, this is at this stage right now. It's still doing the analysis. It will roll back also automatically. If it finds an issue, it will roll back also. So it's done two analysis runs actually. So uh, it is below threshold. It's not crossed 50 yet. None of this has data point has crossed 50 yet. So you can see that it's at uh, every minute it's checking with an interval of minute. Uh, that is all configured in my analysis run. So my latency check is uh, uh, starts after one minute. After launching a load test, it waits for a minute because you have to get some data. Interval of one minute. If the failure, if it crosses 50 for two consecutive times out of four, uh, it will detect it as a failure. Uh, right now it's fine. I think it's going to run four, pick up four data points. So it will be fine. Three of them have been fine. I just picked up one more. See, it's been successful. Four successes, no failures, no errors. Uh, so this analysis run should be good. The load test uh, is not looking at any data. This latency is watching for that data, so which you see here already. And uh, load test would have uh, would finish now also. I think it's five minutes or seven minutes that I'm running it for. The latency has stabilized also. And uh, that would mean my rollout would progress. Uh, you will also see the prod. Uh, it doesn't show up here because it's not happening via this it does show up here. So this is the canary, this is the uh, preview canary service to which two pods are running. And this is my main. And uh, that's where 60% uh, traffic has been shifted. Now 80% and now 100%. So this is successful now. And it rolls out. And this is where my stable application, this stable will move to canary. There'll be multiple replicas there. That's what you're going to see. The new set of pods, right? And uh, this will go away after 15 seconds. That, you know, there's an interval configured there. Okay, Rajdeep has a question about the nerd and the geek pass. Geek pass is, uh, gives you access to um, the, it's like a launch pack. So it gives you access to Ultimate DevOps Bootcamp a 90 day challenge and courses related to that, including Jenkins, Git, Docker, etc., AWS. And if you want access to everything, all the advanced courses as well, in addition to that, that's when our uh, nerd pack is uh, useful. Nerd gives you access to everything, basically all my course library and uh, including the advanced courses that will be uh, added like Argo and, you know, EKS and uh, there's Kubernetes, there is uh, DevSecOps, there is, uh, let's say, CICD uh, advanced course on that, you know, uh, 
there is a course on flux cd as well so all of those courses are part of the nerd pack that is what you get in addition to geek yeah uh, satish has a question do we have exercises to set up monitoring yes um, if you are a member uh, it will be added to our 90 day challenge which you have access to already so when you log in uh, this is what you follow up on so when you log in you go to the dashboard and on the dashboard the dms dashboard is the devops mastery system dashboard and this is where you will find your uh, ongoing challenge and this is where you'll uh, see the monitorize the live session for that and then uh, there will be an exercise also right and if you complete all of this mission successfully you get a, a badge also that is what you will get you know once you have completed this automatically you will be associated with that batch that is the idea so if you haven't signed up to the membership portal uh, definitely consider doing that i'm gonna run that offer just one more time in case some of you missed it Yeah, this is the offer which is going to run for the 15 minutes. Uh, the Cedric has a question. How long will this 90 day challenge will be available to students? 90 day challenge, the recordings will be available to you. There is no time limit on that. So if you are a member, the recordings will always be available to you. And the challenge you can complete at your own pace as well. Like we do live sessions um, and this is the live, last live session. But all the recordings will definitely be available to you uh, later on as well. Is lab infra included is the question from Rajdeep. No, we do not include the lab infra, uh, but you can use either set up your own infra or you can use something like Killer Coda uh, to set up your environment. But I would highly recommend you use your own infra, which you can continue using because this gives you access to one hour or four hour with the plus account. But uh, uh, if you really want to master DevOps, I would recommend you set up your environment like I have done this on DigitalOcean as a cloud right now. I'm going to look at the Q&A section as well. So um, there's a question from Sumit. I missed the topic, but is it possible to expose multiple containers in the same port to run the same servers? Uh, yes, of course. Why not? So um, if you are talking about multiple containers exposing ports on the same server, yes. Uh, in fact, we have many containers, like all of these containers are running on one machine only. And this one has exposed a port 30,400. This is 9090. This is uh, uh, 3100, this is uh, 32100. So all of these are running on the same node. Uh, and it's very much possible to have them expose different ports as well. So basically, one container here can run uh, or be available on 31200, another one on 80, another one on, um, you know, 30,000. And it could be a container running in a pod also two different containers one and two running as part of the same pod they can be exposed to different ports also or even on this one they can be exposed on the pod as well they can be exposed on different ports without proxy setup yes so without proxy setup if you're exposing then you expose it using either node port or using ingress controller if you use node port it will be different ports every time if you use ingress controller, it will be uh, a domain name or a path like this, either vote.example.com or maybe uh, an IP address slash XYZ, right? So you can do that as well. If there is a path-based routing setup, because this is my Nginx in ingress controller, it is looking for a path or a host name. And if it is set up, it would work. Why not? So you can also expose it this way. There are various ways of exposing your application via Kubernetes. All right, by the way, this load test is completed. You can see that it is back to 0.5. So if I look at the last one hour uh, or last 30 minutes, you see this load test as a bump here, the spike. This spike uh, lasted maybe about five to seven minutes. And then uh, CPU utilization went up during that time. 
uh, network pressure went down, latency went up. Uh, so you can see the correlation between all of these metrics. And these metrics can be fed in to the automated analysis during the canary as well, right? And that's what happened here. It did automated analysis. And based on that, you see the result of the analysis as well. And based on that, it figured out that, oh, it all looks fine and no issues whatsoever with this. And uh, this is ready to go. If my threshold had been 30, for example, it would have had a problem for sure. Uh, let's try that as a test. So if I change that threshold, instead of success condition is 50 milliseconds, if I say 20 milliseconds, if it is uh, less than that, failure condition is about 20 milliseconds, right? Uh, so if this is the case, what would happen? Let's find out and let's change the image version to V4. Apply, which should uh, trigger the rollout. Yeah. V4 is the canary, it's progressing, container creating, it just created the canary release. You'll see it here also, V4, uh, it is running that experiment. Uh, it's a functional test, so it will run for a few minutes. That experiment will go through fine. After that, it will load the analysis run. Analysis run is gonna run my load test. And then it will also do automated analysis here. This time it should fail. What that means is it should not progress. It should go back to V3, uh, roll back to V3. That is what I'm expecting when it gets to analysis. We still have to wait for three more minutes. In the meanwhile, if there are questions, I would take those. By the way, if you were to take the offer um, for the DevOps, um, you know, a mastery system, uh, you still have that running on the system and you can also uh, use the code that I shared in the chat. Okay, without proxy setup uh, is what I, uh, okay, there's a question I've already answered about port forwarding without proxy setup with proxy setup also. Uh, Rajdeep has a question about the nerd plus gig access will be for one year, yes, right now. Uh, that is gonna go away. So I'm gonna create a lifetime membership plan it's already there. You can also see, go for lifetime membership plan. It's already there and you can use the same code uh, to get the lifetime plan as well, right? So that gives you access to um, nerd plus everything in Geek is already there and nerd access as well. So you'll get it for lifetime there. So there is a plan available uh, as lifetime too. You can check it from slash uh, membership, school of Dev slash membership there are both the plans available lifetime as well as one year uh, naga has a question do we get links to all the previous session for reference sure why not um, if you haven't subscribed to our channel on uh, youtube do so because we have all the recordings of all the sessions that we have conducted so far out here right from the mission number one to mission number eight nine and ten will be published so uh, let me share this playlist, the entire playlist with you. If I can. Yeah, this is the playlist that you can go through and uh, make sure you haven't you subscribed to the channel so that you get notification on all the other uh, rest of the you know content as well that we publish. So all the recordings, we generally put it on the portal, but it's also available on YouTube for your reference. Uh, Naga has a question about how to check the logs and uh, using monitoring. See, for logs, we have a couple of things that we can do. We have not set up log monitoring yet. Prometheus is not a log monitoring system, but for logs, you can do this basically. So I have pods and I'm gonna check the logs for it. Let's say, something to do with node exporter here i can use kubectl logs in this namespace and uh, this is the pod and i can also watch for the logs what's happening with that right and that's typically what you can do 
You can also look at the events, KubeCut will get events uh, for a particular namespace called as prod. And there I see uh, it's talking about the rollouts and stuff like that. So you can look at the events as well and filter those events too. Yeah, replica set scaling down. I think there is something going on with the load test here. Let's see what's happening. No, this is still rolling out. It's still running analysis. And this time uh, it started load test. The latency test will start after one minute. And we'll see the result of that, what happens here. And based on that, um, it will, you know, kind of uh, show you what happens here. Ben has a question about the payment link. Payment link is available right here. So if you go to memberships, uh, you can get the payment link in your currency. It's a PPP adjusted pricing for India and you will also see it in usd and you can choose the yearly or not a uh, lifetime and enroll directly from this url you can also apply 90 ddc 15 as the offer code uh, at the checkout okay looking at the analysis now uh, i'll wait for uh, this analysis to go through at least once See, this is failed. One failure because now the threshold is 20, right? Somewhere here, uh, threshold is 20 and it has crossed it already. So if it fails for twice, it's going to start rolling out, rolling back. One failure. Uh, let's wait, right? So it should not go through with V4 because V4 seems risky. So it should back to V3. Yeah, it still shows v4, v3 here through my uh, URL. This is the, this is Canary. So part of it is 60% is going through v4, 40% uh, is v3. So that's still in progress. So you see both uh, right now, you know, it's routing to both of these versions, more of v4s actually than v3s. If you monitor it for longer time, right? But now the analysis, uh, is failing two failures yeah um, let's wait for one more minute and see what happens here it actually has started rolling back I believe yes so failed failure limit has crossed uh, that is two so analysis failed so what it should do it should roll back and that's what is going to happen. So it is actually deleting it. It sets a timer in nine seconds. It will all be gone. This is still stable connection and I should go back to V3 completely. No V4s after that. Yeah, it's already happened. I believe the traffic is already would have shifted rolled back and this is gone now. It's gone back to V3. So it ensures that whenever it rolls out, it does it in a safer way based on the analysis this is an automated analysis that we have set up and uh, you can run see the another load test running here yeah as part of that analysis and based on that we so this is what we do basically we don't just set up monitoring we use that for scaling we use that for uh, let's say automated analysis and uh, that is where we the real interesting fun stuff happens right something like this if you want to understand how all of this works, uh, I'm building a course on Argo CD, which is uh, going to come in. Apart from that, there is another course that I've built uh, where I'm using uh, scaling, order scaling on this metric. So this will be part of my EKS course, also part of my uh, AWS, uh, let's say Kubernetes course also later. Right. So if you are a member, you'll have access to all of these courses anyways. Are there any specific questions now? I showed you how to set up monitoring using HEM and use that monitoring data for uh, automated canary analysis as well, uh, which is a really interesting stuff. And I really enjoyed creating this content, right? Um, it's, it's a very interesting uh, content out there that we have built actually. 
and this is where really the automated analysis and this is what organizations should do today right so set up uh, canary releases with argo cd uh, integrate with prometheus and uh, set up monitoring of course you set up alerting with that too and uh, so on and so forth and this is kind of the end of our um, let's say the 90 day challenge this iteration for now and if you are a member uh, definitely go through that entire um, challenge complete it so that you also get a certification at the end of it right and then you would learn a lot really right so that's the best uh, best part about it right so you learn a lot of things you would pick up a lot of skills if you have completed this challenge entirely because this unfolds like a story and you go from one mission to another and to another and so on all right so rajdeep if you can stay back um for a few minutes after the session is over i can help you uh with the you know the payment uh, and you know making sure it works for you also um yeah so we'll just connect over chat so even if the session gets over the chat will still be available if not you can always send us uh, email at support at schooloftevops.com yeah support at schooloftevops.com you will definitely see uh, let's say this one so whichever way you uh, make the payment from that link uh, you should definitely get a place where you can apply the coupon code actually right so but i'll help you with that once this session gets over any other questions folks uh anything that you would like to ask i hope you have enjoyed this challenge so far and uh, all the videos are already available i've shared the link uh, for the youtube channel as well if you haven't subscribed to school of devops please do so and um, that would help us to grow uh, the community as well and that would help you to get more updates on the live sessions like these and a lot more content which i'm planning to bring into the channel so with that we will conclude our sessions here thank you very much for attending today's session uh, thank you very much for attending 90 day devops challenge and i hope it has been useful to you i wish you all the best with your devops journey and I would love to see you, uh, those of you who haven't joined our membership platform, the School of DevOps, I would love to see you on the other side of it as well. So thank you and uh, uh, all the best. I will be here for a few more minutes for those of you who would like to ask questions or need support uh, getting the membership as well. All right, so you can connect with me, uh, chat with me. If those of you who want to drop by, uh, drop, uh, drop off, you can do so as well. All right, so thank you and all the best. We are done with uh, the session. I will just stay on for the support questions if there are any. All right, Rajdeep and Ben, I have enabled uh, the and uh, you know the speak option for you if you want to go ahead with the questions so ben if you can let's say elaborate a little bit about the aem tool um, that would help me answer this question better.
I've shared the link to direct link to um, the nerd pass Rajdeep and uh, I think that should be useful for you okay I'm gonna just hang up the call but I'll be available on the chat <laughs> 